Video shows group brutally attacking street vendor at Dockweiler Beach. Uh, this was surprising to me. I mean, it's... <laughs> it's... A uh, cell phone video caught uh, a group of late teens to 20s brutally attacking a, a street vendor uh, at Dockweiler Beach. And it, it's crazy to me, man. It, it just shows the state of the world. You know, it, it's change man like, okay, it's, it's definitely the it's definitely the people that know don't know where doc wireless beach is it's not me because i definitely know but where is doc wireless beach <laughs> it's uh it's near lax actually it's uh local to me okay so they basically just attacked a random street vendor just for no reason was there a reason uh there was a skirmish before i guess there's an argument over um the the I guess the people who attacked him were customers at first and, and weren't happy with something and ended up being a, a big fiasco. Interesting. That's yeah. It's just, it's, it's a shocking one, man. You know, I knew you were going to bring the comedy. So I, I had to, to highlight something that I think is a, is something that needs to change, man. Something that needs to be addressed. You know, that guys be kind of fast food service workers. One of the biggest red flags, if you're single and you're you're listening to this, one of the biggest red flags that I would say 90% of men or women have, the men are my single friends. The women are the women I have talked to. One of the biggest red flags is being rude to anyone in the service industry. If you're rude to anyone in the service industry, oh, thank you, thank you, people. Uh, <laughs> If you're rude to anyone in the service industry, there's something wrong with you, not the service industry. Like, yes, they could suck, but they're also getting paid probably less than minimum wage. And they probably hate their lives or they're teenage. And so they have a manager who is just trying to basically herd big cats at that point and just keep everyone focused long enough to get through the day. So keep that in mind. Just be kind of food service workers. They're just trying to make a living, especially if they're street vendors. That literally is their living. Be kind. But my All right, favorite... so um, – sorry, I thought I was going to do my second one. Go ahead. Oh, you can hit your second one. All right, so this is an older article, but it, it just – it struck me right away when I read it, and it's hilarious. It says, one-armed man applauds the kindness of strangers. <laughs> <laughs> You. Man, what? Okay, what? Why is he applauding? What? What was the kindness of these strangers? Uh, so these guys, these guys were um, watching. <laughs> they were, they were, uh, they were giving out food to the homeless people, and this this man, I guess, was reading the newspaper, having his lunch, and he he only has one arm, and so. In the, the article, it says that this man just started slapping his thigh <laughs> and applauding them and, and got their attention and, you know, just good job on, on what they were doing. And... Okay, tell me why people in, like, their 40s, I'm pretty sure it's, like, an after age of 40 thing because I don't see it with anyone under the age of 40, but that's just how they clap. When they think something's like mildly entertaining or funny or they're cheering at a game or something, they just clap their thigh. They just clap on their thigh. Uh, cause it's, it's yeah, I do, but this guy. Your, is it too much effort after your 40 to like clap with your hand? Yeah, I do, but this guy only had one arm. <laughs> well, yeah, but still, I, I was just saying that I've seen, it's, I'm pretty sure it's strictly in men over 40. So I guess we got a few years you know a bit over a decade before we both get there and we'll let you guys know so my first one here cat food brand will let humans eat its latest fancy feast yeah mm -hmm. do you mm -hmm. want to eat cat food negative okay well you don't have to Fancy Feast announced its plans for Gatto Bianco, a pop-up restaurant in New York City. It's no tall tale. 
I just love the wordplay in this article. Cat food brand Fancy Feast wasn't kitten around this week <laughs> when it announced it would temporarily open a temporary cat food inspired restaurant for humans in New York City. Basically, it's just a two a two day pop up. It's an Italian style restaurant culinary experience inspired by the brand's food. So basically, they're taking the flavors of like the cat food and putting it into human food. You know, it's all made possible by the brand chef Amanda Hassner and Mike Lenz, uh, star winning um, Italian chef Sharice Casella. It's going to be in New York. It's actually t- today, August 11th, and tomorrow, August 12th. There's eight dinners. Reservations were booked literally like an hour after this was announced. So people in New York are wild. So I just thought it was, I just love the wordplay made possible. They were kitten. They weren't kitten around this time. No tall tale. <laughs> Those are the best parts. My second one. Oh wait, before I get into the second one, so the people know, Aaron, dogs or cats? Oh, okay. it's dogs, dude, for sure. Okay, your paws had me worried there that you were actually thinking about that question. Dogs for sure. Oh we're no. Dog people. We both have. We both have puppies, actually. My puppy's. 10 11 months old his birthday's next month and yours is what six months old uh, about yeah she's getting she's seven actually seven months old uh we will post puppy pictures on our instagram so make sure you follow over at young dad podcast on instagram or young dad pod on instagram my second one man pushes peanut peanuts up colorado mountain using unconventional body parts <laughs> Do you want to guess what body part he used? <laughs> and get your mind out of the gutter. Everyone listening, get your mind out of the gutter. Um, I'm going to go... I'm going to go... I'm going to go stomach on this one, dude. Stomach. The man did... So, more context here. The man did most of his push at night on his way up to the 14,115-foot summit. Oh. So, are we locking in stomach as final answer? No, dude, that takes a lot of core strength. Um, it's got to be back. Well, no, it's unconventional, so. I don't know. Listener, lock in your answer now. A 53-year-old Colorado man didn't crack under pressure as he pushed a peanut to the top of a 14,000-foot summit. Colorado Springs resident Bob Salem marked it. It took seven days to push a peanut up at Pike's Peak on Friday last week, a couple weeks ago, uh, about a month ago actually now. The man decided to let his nose do the pushing. Oh! His nose had the aid of a homemade contraption, a CPAP sleeping machine with a duct tape spoon to it. Hey, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing as people? <laughs> If some guy is pushing up a peanut up Pike's Peak, so would you believe oh, me if I told you this isn't this isn't the first time someone's done this? Oh, there's no way, dude. In a segment on mountain peanut pushers, Texas craftsman Bill Williams did a journey to win with a peanut to win $50 on a bet in 1929. So we're talking big money back in 1929. In 1963, a guy named Ulysses Baxter pushed a peanut up a mountain in eight days, a record at the time. A day, he did it to celebrate the city of Manitou Springs, 150th birthday. And he is the first person in the 21st century to complete the push. And he went through about two dozen peanuts along the way. Hmm. And it was a 12.6 yeah, mile route. That's rough, dude. It's very rough. Like. Oh, man. I just. I just couldn't believe it. When I read this, I'm like, oh, man, what body part did he use? That's what got me hooked up on this one. <laughs> 